Uh, hi everyone, my name is Dr. Thaseen. I'm a microbiologist. I know there's a lot of information out there on COVID-19 at this time. Uh, there's talk, you know, people are saying that this is the end of the world. Uh, there's some of, some information is inaccurate. Most of the information out there is from a clinical uh, perspective. In this video, I'll be talking to you today about how microbiologists see COVID-19. <clears throat> So I'm a microbiologist. I got my training from, at the University of Saskatchewan, where I got my PhD from the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization, where I also did my postdoctoral training. I spent many, many years working with pathogens like bacteria and viruses. So what do microbiologists really do? Microbiologists detect and diagnose these pathogens because you, when something new comes up like COVID-19, how do you really detect it? Is there an assay for it? Microbiologists also grow and characterize these pathogens uh, we also have to develop animal models for these pathogens so that we can study virulence factors. We also need to develop intervention strategies which can include antibiotics, antimicrobials, antivirals, or even vaccines. So what is COVID-19? COVID-19 is the name of the disease. And uh, once you're infected with the virus called SARS-CoV-2, you get COVID-19. Where did COVID-19 come from? Uh, it is. A lot of researchers feel or believe that COVID-19 came from bats. And when you look at the different uh, coronavirus family viruses or the viruses that originated from, from these uh, <clears throat> different sources, it's, it's obvious that uh, these viruses came from bats and SARS-CoV-2 is right here. Uh, the researchers believe that there's an intermediate host uh, which was involved in the transmission of this virus from bats to humans. However, regardless of the case, this pathogen is serious and is uh, uh, one which does deserve a lot of attention. According to the Center for Disease Prevention and Control, uh, some of the symptoms involved with COVID-19 include shortness of breath, a fever, and cough. How is COVID-19 transmitted? COVID-19 can be, because it's a respiratory pathogen, it's usually transmitted by aerosols, which means if someone sneezes within close proximity to you, you can acquire the pathogen. Or if those droplets uh, come in contact with surfaces like desks, uh, computers, other uh, phones, and you, you uh, touch those surfaces, you can get the pathogen. At this point, according to the uh, John Hopkins University, <clears throat> there are approximately 665,000 cases in the world. So definitely this is a deadly virus, it is serious, and out of those, about 30,000 people have died. In the United States, which is becoming the new epicenter of COVID-19, there are roughly about 124,000 cases, and about 2,000 people have died. In Canada, the situation is still a little bit better relative to those places. We have about 5,000 uh, cases and about 60 deaths. So if you look at the data coming out, from all these infections, it appears that about, this is good news for us, it appears that about 80% of the people have mild infections, whereas about 4% uh, require critical care, which means they need to be hospitalized and need ICU care. Uh, about 13% of, of, of those patients require severe hospitalization. So it's not all bad news for us. When you look at the age distribution, it appears that those that are 80, 80 years and above are at highest risk. However, in Canada at least, uh, uh, it's been shown that a lot of the cases are, uh, or people, a lot of the people who are getting these cases are between 20 to 40 years old. So it's not, you know, it's, we really need to be careful and we can't just assume that it's gonna affect the population that are 80, and 80 years and over. It can affect anyone uh, even in the ages of 20 to 40 years old. <clears throat> if you have underlying conditions, uh, definitely, just like any other pathogen, you need to be extra careful. According to the stats that are out there, if you have cardiovascular disease, you're at the fatality rate can be 10%. If you have more than one underlying condition, more, more than one pre-existing medical condition, that's even more severe and you definitely need to uh, be in contact with your healthcare provider and follow the guidelines. How does COVID-19 compare to other pathogens, other deadly pathogens? One of the deadliest outbreak that we ever saw, that humanity ever saw, was the Spanish flu. In that, about 500 million people got infected and between 17 to 15 million people were dead. So if you put COVID-19 on that scale, 
the fatality rate is about one to five percent. So it's not that deadly, but definitely it's something we can't take for granted. If you look at the fatality, fatality rate across different countries, for whatever reason, it's a little different. In the U.S., it's about 1.4%. In China, it's about 4%. And in Italy, it's 10%. So the obvious question, which a lot of people keep asking me, why the difference? Well, according to researchers, microbiologists, and clinicians, that there can be various factors. This can include the age of the population, uh, the COVID-19 uh, testing that's available, uh, definitions of a positive case, and so forth. Most of these pathogens have a typical curve where you slowly see a, uh, an increase in cases, the, you know, uh, slowly see an increase in cases, it goes all the way up and then it comes down. In the case of COVID-19, we're seeing something like that in China. This is what we saw and in other places. In South Korea, for example, the cases are leveling off. And of course, all of us want to be at a stage where we're in a place where the cases are leveling off. But if we all work together, governments, the people, uh, researchers, clinicians, we can flatten the curve. When you get infected with COVID-19, this is a respiratory pathogen, so you will definitely, definitely see some symptoms. And what does the virus do? This virus binds to receptors that are in the res respiratory epithelial tract. And the receptor for this virus is ACE2, which you can see right here. It's a well-known receptor that was also uh, found in SARS-CoV. And once the pathogen gets in, it replicates and it causes these symptoms, which we are seeing nowadays. Is there a treatment for COVID-19 and how far are we from that treatment? According to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there is no FDA approved treatment at this time. However, there are other drugs which are FDA approved for other illnesses that are currently being investigated, including uh, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, and remdesivir. These are currently under investigation and there's no uh, uh, approval so far to use them for normal COVID patients. How far are we from a vaccine? This is a question which a lot of people ask me. It's been out there. How long is it going to take? According to the World Health Organization, this is the latest data they have. There are approximately, or there are two vaccine candidates that are under clinical trials, and there are about 42 vaccine candidates that are under preclinical trials. I wanna highlight some of the work that's being done at the University of Saskatchewan. This is work being done at the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization. It's being led by Dr. Daryl Falzerano. He's an expert on uh, Ebola and mers cov And this team here has developed the first animal model in Canada, which is a ferret animal model. And they believe that they have the vaccine candidate that will be protective against COVID-19. But how long will this take? Nobody has the answer. It can be, you know, six months, one year, uh, all the efforts are being currently in you know, all those researchers everyone's putting in their efforts, but there can still be some time Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video